Dramatists Guild of America. Um, and I want to thank um, CPT. Uh, thank you so much for holding this really wonderful event. That last panel was fabulous. Um, I feel a grave pressure <laughs> after that last panel. So many amazing things. I took so many pages of notes. Um, so thank you uh, to Raymond. Thank you to Beth. Thank you to Caitlin, thank you to Molly, thank you to CPT. Also, um, thank you to uh, North Water Partners for doing the, uh, all the technical aspects today. Um, and also, we are live streaming on HowlRound. So for the audience participating at home, hello. <laughs> um, and I am so excited today uh, to talk with Amy Mueller and Beth Wood, uh, who are wonderful um, producing artists who have many years of experience and we're talking the the uh, kind of the topic of the conversation is the plays not the thing which is a wonderful wonderful title Caitlin was that your title is that yeah uh, there's a one great title Raymond's okay great title and um, yeah so we're going to be talking a little bit about the relationships between um, producing agencies or producing entities uh, and uh, artists and how those relationships sometimes go very well and deepen over many years and maybe even if we get there, some, how some of those relationships might not work out the way that we had initially hoped for. Um, and um, Amy made a great point before we started. She just wanted to know a little bit about the background of the audience here. Um, I'm sure mo uh, most of us are, are theater uh, artists in some way, so, um, and you might, we're going to do like a little hand raising here just to kind of get a feel of the crowd, um, and you might end up raising your hand for all, an answer yes to all these questions. <laughs> um, uh, who here comes maybe more from or does do some producing on the producing end? Okay, yeah, so, all right, okay. What about uh, people who more uh, do do playwriting itself, playwrights. Okay, oh, so many playwrights here. I know there's quite a few Dramatist Guild members here. I see you all. Um, you're, you're all going in the regional update. <laughs> um, what about uh, primarily actors or people who are mostly on the stage in some form or another? Okay, all right, large portion of the room. Uh, dramaturgs, dramaturgs, we've got a couple dramaturgs, wonderful. Uh, directors, director, oh yeah, well, look, a lot of directors. Uh, other, other kinds of important um, uh, scenic designers, costume designers, oh, a number of costume designers, wonderful. Um, sound designers, lighting designers, Ooh, all right, we got a, we got a lighting designer, <laughs> wonderful. Um, were there any, yeah? No, that, I mean, Self-identify. <laughs> Self-identify, yeah. <laughs> Great. Super. Um, so I loved the question that, that Raymond started us off with uh, on the last round. What kind of projects or one project in particular that you guys are finding yourself uh, deeply involved in or drawn to right now that you are working on? Uh, possibly through the organization that, that you run or maybe through another organization that you are um, working with at this time. Um, Beth, do, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I think a, a project for me that is at the forefront of my mind is, is the same project that Nicole mentioned in the last panel mm -hmm. is a breakout session or for Gors because I've had the honor of being in the room. As, as she is creating this piece um, and just kind of what that journey is for mm -hmm. those characters in this story. Um, yeah, it's definitely at the forefront of my brain and just kind of dreaming about how to make that all come to life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> and and you, you guys have worked on previous projects together. How did that kind of come about? How did it... Uh, yeah, so I, I directed another play of Nicole's called Lines in the Dust a few years ago, mm -hmm. which is about the innate racism of our uh, public education system. Mm -hmm. And uh, she gave me the permission to, to direct that play because uh, I wasn't sure I 
I should direct that play. I didn't know if it was mm -hmm. my story to help tell, yeah. um, even though I thought it was an incredibly important conversation mm -hmm. for the Cleveland community to have mm -hmm. um, around our public education systems and the sacrifices yeah. we make for our children. Um, and so that's kind of how Nicole and I first started to get to know each other. And then it's blossomed into what I hope is a beautiful friendship and collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, what about you? What are, what um, are, what's a project maybe that you're, that's at the forefront of your mind right now? Um, well, I, I, I guess I want to kind of preface this yeah. by saying that um, I'm the artistic director of a play development lab and a playwright incubator um, where um, uh, we are really non, a non-producing mm -hmm. um, lab that is dedicated to the, to the work of the playwright and to advancing playwrights' careers. Mm -hmm. um, so from that vantage mm -hmm. point, mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the things that I've been working on since 2011 is developing a playwright, a, a, a playwright residency program for our local community. And so, and it's been very, you know, sort of, experimental so you know we've really piloted it for quite a long time mm -hmm. and finally I feel like the the process and the kind of frame of that program is pretty solid now and I'm really very excited about it because we've just inducted our next class so we mm -hmm. have or, or uh, you know cohort um, I'm trying to get away from the school language so um, uh, so and that's something it's kind of like a self-training thing like what you call something and I was calling it class mm -hmm. because it made it clear to other people mm -hmm. but realizing that it that it's not a class it's you know they're not they're there to do their work mm -hmm. and to to take their careers uh, to the next letter level and advance those careers um, uh, into you know launch into a national uh, a national career, mm -hmm. and so it's not it's not school in any way, mm -hmm. you know. So this each of the playwrights in the program have four year residency at Playwrights Foundation, and um, we offer kind of a, a make your own bagel menu of mm -hmm. of resources that are free to to the residents, and they each have a small budget they can also use every year to. Um, pay for whatever they need to advance a particular play or a project or their careers or, you know, and lots of lots and lots of things. Um, so that's what I'm really excited about right now is our new cohort starting. Um, we have 10 playwrights now and they're essentially two years apart in their journey with us. Mm -hmm. um, but they work together as a group and individually. That's interesting. The, the uh, where you the the model where you um, give them you know a, a, some money to do what they kind of want with in terms mm -hmm. of the the development. Um, I wonder uh, a, a follow up question to both of you might be, um, you know, how how do you negotiate the agency of the artist, the principal artist, or the group of artists, right, uh, with uh, maybe some things that you were looking for in a project or hoping for or uh, uh, you know recognizing that you might be able to um, you know uh, get in touch with a certain audience perhaps or um, uh, or develop a new kind of work that you are excited about this person did a wonderful job in this last play <laughs> right we were talking about in the last one and we uh, you know, and we love that. Um, and then this is something very different. You know, how do you negotiate that kind of agency, and how does that maybe even come up with resources? Um, yeah, I think uh, I think it all depends on the mm -hmm. relationship, mm -hmm. and and that's a kind of a key thing in that it's a consensual relationship for a playwright to be working with a producing or a development organization. And so it's all about what that what you lay out that relationship to be in the beginning. Um, so maybe mm -hmm. you both decide that this is a that that we're going to date and 
and maybe it'll lead to more. Right? <laughs> like, maybe I really like you, and I'm, I'm really ready to see where this relationship and this collaboration can go. But maybe I just really like this project, mm -hmm. and maybe we're not going to work on other things, so we're, we're going to essentially have a one-night stand. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> There's no judgment. <laughs> it's all about creating something, you know? It could be one beautiful night, or it could be like years of, of love. And uh, I'm going on this long tangent. But I say all that to say that it's so dependent on what that relationship is, mm -hmm. and that, that that's a two-way street mm -hmm. for whether, whether we're working with an here at Cleveland Public Theater, whether we're working with an artist in entry point, you know, in this early stage of creation, or we're working with an artist uh, through our catapult program, which is really meant to take a play from whatever stage it's currently at to production ready mm -hmm. here at Cleveland Public Theater. Those are very different relationships. Because mm -hmm. in catapult, like, we're dating, <laughs> right? We're dating and we're committed to each other. You know, so we're going to give different kinds of feedback mm -hmm. and ask for different things on that kind of project mm -hmm. than we will on entry point because we want you to do you. You know, we always want the artists to do them, right? That's, that's of the foremost importance. Mm -hmm. And what resources and support mm -hmm. can we as an institution or me as a human provide to create the right environment around you? And so it's all about that communication, mm -hmm. asking for what you need, mm -hmm. but also understanding that sometimes what you need is beyond the capacity of the person you're working with. And so it's all about what is that? Mm -hmm. How do you set those parameters? Mm -hmm. Or do your best to set those parameters in the beginning mm -hmm. so that you both have that agency to ask for what you really need and that that's OK to ask. Yeah, yeah. I love the metaphor. I wonder if there is an app for that. <laughs> swipe right, swipe left. <laughs> Amy, what, what, what ways, and this yeah. was initially, this is a question why I was provoked by the, um, by the idea of giving the playwright, you know, the money to kind of mm -hmm. do what they want with it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, agency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that in my experience, I think the, the beauty of a play lab and the sector of you know play labs across the country is that it's a place where the playwright ha has agency or mm -hmm. ha is is in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. And I think that as a community, I'm going to be I'm going to sort of stereo the stereotypical playwright, you know, does feels like a victim that feels you know feels that they don't have agency because they're knocking on the door and they have to get through gatekeepers and you know and how, you know how do you do that and and that once a play a play is chosen for a season that playwrights oftentimes don't have a voice in how uh, the project is being cast mm -hmm. is being designed um, you know it, it, there's you know there's this 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 term which I really don't like the script is now locked you know the that changes cannot be made that you know that and I'm talking about of course new new work or a new or a premiere or or a rolling <laughs> premiere a newish play um, that the playwright wants to continue working on so the playwrights feel don't feel that kind of agency generally speaking so I find it um, I find I think that what Beth said about your expectations, mm -hmm. cl clarifying your expectations, walking into a project with a particular producer, and understanding how this relationship is going to work and what you need and want, mm -hmm. and really need, really need. Like, how much authority do you need, for example, on casting choices, on marketing language, mm -hmm. on and all these things are very important. Um, uh, I want to get to that marketing question later, so I'm putting a little tag on it. Mm -hmm. But um, but 
I think with regard to, so, so my experience, particularly with the resident playwrights, is that it's taken this long for me as the artistic director to figure out how to empower the play, my playwrights, the playwrights that are in the program, how to fully engage most of them. Because my experience in the beginning were there, that they were waiting for me to say, you know, do a workshop. I'm scheduling you for, you know, a table read over yeah, here. Yeah. You know, I, I, let, come work on something at the Bay Area Play Arts Festival. You know, there are 10 of them. Mm -hmm. So for me to, you know, <laughs> I, 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 wanted the, I wanted to turn the table on who was leading Mm -hmm. so, so I've come up with this idea based on my colleagues' suggestions too, other people do this, is that you're the artistic director of your experience, your four-year experience. You decide how you want to use it. You don't have to decide the whole four years, just decide six months. Decide the next month, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then figure out what it is you need. And so. That's a, that's a kind of a tall order, especially when you're used to being told, mm -hmm. this is what you're getting, this is what we can do, you know, or can't do, yeah. you know. So I think that um, uh, that's, what I, that's where, you know, for me, I'm working with playwrights to feel, to begin to articulate their own needs and their mm -hmm. and and their and have feel that they have some agency in relationship to mm -hmm. to producers and to uh, to uh, folks like the CPT who mm -hmm. happen to be a little bit more open <laughs> to having a relationship mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but um, I think that all producers want that ultimately and it's it's hard to admit that you have a limit, you know? Mm -hmm. So you're coming into my theater, but I don't have any equity contracts, Right. okay? We, are, we would like to produce your play, but I have no equity contracts. I need you to know that. That's really hard for a producer to say at the beginning, you know? Or your set budget's going to be $500, yeah. you know? And so, no, yeah. we can't have the aerial um, you know, <laughs> you know, we have to find another way, mm -hmm. a creative way to, or we, or then the playwright can say, well, you know, I really, really wanted you to do this play, but it, it has to have this mm -hmm. in order to do it. How, how, how can that work? And I think in those conversations too, between like a producing organization and, and a, a creator, a playwright, or someone who's creating in a in a unconventional way. Mm -hmm. Those conversations are incredibly important because it it's like you're ha you're having coffee before your first full date. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So like if I'm saying you're asking to have marketing approval, mm -hmm. but maybe that's a deal breaker for me. Right. 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 right? And it's better to know that early on. I mean, yeah. I think. Many producing organizations, including us, have, have started conversations with plays that we're super excited about. And as we dr start to drill out those details, we realize that actually maybe this isn't the right collaboration mm -hmm. for either of us mm -hmm. at this moment right. in time. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we're not going to advocate for that play or that playwright, but right now in this moment, maybe it's, it would be painful for all of us mm -hmm. to right. enter into a longer agreement. Right. Yeah. Whereas if at Playwrights Foundation, since we can't do the aerial anyway, you know, <laughs> what, what, then I can sit with my writers or my writer and say, hey, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about, you know, they come and say, how, how can, who can produce this play? Where should I go? What, who should I talk to? I, I've got a trip to Chicago. Who, you know, who can you call? And, you know, I've got this list of, you know, and I can say, you know, actually, I think what you need to understand is you've got this element that's dramaturgically necessary that many theaters who are going to look at your work aren't going to be able to afford. 
why don't you write a grant mm -hmm. to this, this, um, seriously. Mm -hmm. I, I just did that with one of my writers, and guess what? He got the money! <laughs> okay? And, and so, I, and he, I saw him yesterday, or the day before yesterday, I said, and I had gotten the email, and he, I said, you got the money. Now they're going to produce it. Mm -hmm. But you did, he wrote the grant. Mm -hmm. I helped, you know, he sent it to me, I helped him. But that's agency right there, because now the producer who was like, oh, well, Mm, I don't know, yeah, maybe, but I don't have a date yet, you know, that whole conversation, like the date never quite materializes. I said, you're going to get a date. <laughs> you're going to get a date. For, yeah. They're going to produce it because yeah. you got the money. You know, and that, and, and that was a really a, an exercise in agency. Yeah. Um, not that you have to go and fund your own projects, but recognizing what about your project is the barrier for a producer? Mm -hmm. And if it's this really expensive item, maybe that's what you need to find. And the other the thing that was just kind of popping for me in what you were just saying was, was more than agency. It was the sense of, of coming in and being part of a team. So mm -hmm. if I'm bringing right. a really difficult technical element, I'm part of that solution, right? right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, I am entitled to a production of my play, <laughs> and you must now produce it. But I must sign off on everything. <laughs> and that, hey, it's okay to feel like that. Find your people, right? Find your tribe, find your organizations that are like, yeah, I'm there. I'm going to do that for you, the playwright. Mm -hmm. But know your audience, right? Know, know who you're pitching to so that you can be part of that team. It's a collaboration. This is a mm -hmm. collaborative art form that, you know, we do kind of loft playwrights. They, they write the play. <laughs> and yes, that's beautiful and that's important, but there are all these other artists that come in to support that play and make that play live and breathe, and it's a collaboration. It's a team effort. And so the earlier you become part of that team mm -hmm. or, or show a producing organization, you're like, I want to be part of this team, and that mm -hmm. means a lot to me. And I'm yeah. ready to receive that. Like, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful, mm -hmm. exciting thing yeah. that, to learn about a creator as they're working on a project and pitching a project. We had many people here raise their hands when uh, they're when they were asked if they were playwrights. So I'm wondering if it might be um, something that people would be interested in hearing, if you guys have any um, advice or thoughts on some of those early initial conversations, whether it be with developmental organization, primarily development, or primarily a producing organization, or a little bit of both, right? I mean, uh, when people are starting to have these conversations early on in the dating process, to continue the metaphor, right? What are some things that that uh, you look for? What are some things that tend to, to go well? Um, or not? <laughs> um, well, for me, I, I, I think that, you know, there's, I, I hear it, the unsaid part of your question mm -hmm. is, is even getting to have the conversation, right? You know, and, yeah. and how that process actually mm -hmm. happens. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you form relationships with mm -hmm. the people that you would like to work with as a playwright? Yes. Who and but you're having a hard time getting a meeting or mm -hmm. you know having someone read your work. So there's that part mm -hmm. of it, and I think that's really, really hard and 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 something to talk about. But for me, when when I, when I do, uh, when we do, I use a committee structure to um, to select the work we're going to work on th for the year and the writers we're going to work with in our residency. And um, then I do have, like to have a chat with the writer to find out, to find out what their goals are for the time that they're going to be working with us. And to that, for, that helps me understand what resources we need mm -hmm. to you know, put in place so that they can that person, that, that writer, can 
pursue those goals. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's the conversation I like to have. Yeah. Um, is to and and again, trying to take us out of the driver's seat and mm -hmm. offer writers the resources so that each writer can feels that they are pursuing mm -hmm. something that's important to them for the development of this particular project and not important to me. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my conversation, Yeah, usually. I think what I would uh, respond to are a few things. Um, number one, know who you're pitching to. Mm -hmm. Like, know their body of, know that organization's mm -hmm. body of work. What kind of work do they do? So, you know, I could speak from a, a Cleveland Public Theater perspective and, you know, say that there are some key elements mm -hmm. that we look for and in, in plays we're interested in, but those are nebulous, right? Those mm -hmm. shift and, mm -hmm. but, you know, so for us it's a social justice theme or it's mm -hmm. uh, outside of the mainstream work or it's uh, a play by an artist of color. Uh, mm -hmm. these, are, these are high priority mm -hmm. uh, items for us as we're selecting full productions, right. you know. Um, but if, you're, if you don't have an existing relationship with a theater, get to know them, go mm -hmm. and see their work. It's so important. So you learn more about their aesthetic and you might learn that their aesthetic is not a match for yours, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the other big piece of advice I will give, especially if you don't have, if you've never met, you know, mm -hmm. Ask for coffee, but sometimes mm -hmm. coffee is impossible, right? With leaders of that organization. Enter through the appropriate doors. Mm -hmm. There are doors, every theater has a different submission process. You know, for, for CPT, we have a general submission process, and then we also open up a season submission process for uh, full season productions. Mm -hmm. and then we also have a new work development submission process. Enter in through those doors. Um, is a really Thank great you. option mm -hmm. um, or be around, be mm -hmm. here, volunteer, mm -hmm. usher, you know, or come see shows because we, we see that. Mm -hmm. And as a producer, we're like, wow, that, this individual's like seen like the last 10 shows here. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to, and then they just ask me for coffee? Yes. Yes. I want to, I want now, because I've I seen you. I third that and fourth that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, wow, what's, yeah. what's kind of compelling you to come and hang out with us? And, mm -hmm. and I want to learn more about you. Good. Doesn't mean you have to do that to I complete, I completely agree with, with you, Beth, that finding the theaters that you, you particularly resonate with mm -hmm. in your community and showing up. Mm -hmm. Go to opening night. Volunteer to to do whatever it is that need, needs doing that within within the scope of what you can offer, obviously. Um, uh, yeah, being uh, offering offering something as an uh, entry point to getting to know the folks that you want to work with, mm -hmm. um, and then you know that that way mm -hmm. you know you're not just pitching randomly or wildly. Mm -hmm. Um, which really is hard. That just seems like, I would hate to do that. It's an incredibly <laughs> vulnerable place, yeah. right? Yeah. You're like sending your work out to all these different people that, you know, you're putting your work and your heart out on the line for someone else to judge and maybe not respond to. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's I, I am grateful that I am not that player, that I don't have to do that. Saying yes also, mm -hmm. saying yes to as many opportunities as possible. You don't know where those opportunities are gonna lead you, but say, like we, for, we, every year we do this event called Flash Plays, which are one minute plays, and um, or I'll say 60 second, because we're not doing the one minute play festival that is, um, uh, and um, uh, that is, a, a, a way for me to get to know playwrights that I mm -hmm. that I don't necessarily know or haven't had a chance to read their work, and quite a number of those writers actually have entered our our programs by do, saying yes to writing one minute plays for our flash plays event and then showing up for the mm -hmm. play, showing up for their rehearsals. I get to know them. I get to know them as writers. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I've discovered quite a number of really interesting people that I didn't even know lived in my own community that way. So, saying yes. What are some, um, what are some ways in which you see new theater development moving uh, right now in the United States? What are some of the new kinds of uh, areas of, of interest or uh, places that, place, uh, you know, topics of conversation where people weren't going before and you see <coughs> something or maybe places that you'd really like to see uh, more plays being developed, uh, more new voices being heard, some of the things that you see uh, happening right now. Do you want to talk about that? No, oh, you, you want me to talk about that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you have a lot more plays come across your desk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, God, that's, a, that's, that's a pretty wide question. Yeah, I'm trying sorry. to narrow it my mind. Like, uh. I, I mean, the, I think that the new play development sector mm -hmm. is focused, from my perspective, is focusing more and more and more on the playwright mm -hmm. as opposed to the play. Um, and to developing the, the artist mm -hmm. and their art, you know. Wow. Um, but, you know, and I think that that's a trend, a, trend, a good trend. Mm -hmm. in um, new play, the new play world. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the other trend that I really applaud and fervently wish to follow at Playwrights Foundation is to provide a living wage for playwrights mm -hmm. um, and really invest, allow a playwright to invest themselves in their, in their work and careers by, mm -hmm. by supporting their livelihood. <laughs> for a time so that, and I've seen that being very successful mm -hmm. for playwrights, um, particularly in New York, um, you know, through the Lark and mm -hmm. through this Mellon Foundation uh, residency mm -hmm. um, monies. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in California, that kind of money is very, uh, is very hard to come by. Mm -hmm. And I haven't, I haven't um, unlocked that door yet, but you know try, uh, that's a, a thing that Playwrights Foundation would like to participate in very much so. But needless to say, it is happening, okay. uh, and it's a good. I think it's a great trend. Great. If you want, that's the trend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No, I love what, I love what you say. Uh, to me, just sounds sounds so true. That a focus moving from the play to the playwright. I mm -hmm. mean that's. That sounds very, very true from what, what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think at, at, at Cleveland Public Theater, I think at first I want to acknowledge that we're, it, we're currently using the term of playwright, and I believe that we're referring to conventional playwrights. Mm -hmm. So someone who sits in a room and writes mm -hmm. a play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that is to be celebrated. But I also want to highlight that there yes. are many different ways right. to be a playwright. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that is working with an ensemble of actors. Yes. Maybe that is working with the right people in the room. Mm -hmm. um, so I think at, at CPT, we really mm -hmm. embrace and celebrate not only conventional playwrights, mm -hmm. but also people who are creating in different ways right. and in unique ways that are are purposeful for their artistic process mm -hmm. and really unlock their artistic uh, self. Um, and I think that's really exciting. And I see that movement happening across the country mm -hmm. of, of um, ensemble driven work, mm -hmm. of non-traditionally or unconventionally created work. Mm -hmm. um, site specific work. Site specific work. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what, what is theater? Questioning the convention of theater and pushing those boundaries mm -hmm. of like, you know, does theater require an audience sitting in chairs watching something happen before them? Or can we push that boundary? Like how do we, what is the meaning of that? Yeah. And so I think that's really exciting, especially as, you know, a kind of a conventional theater audiences are are perhaps aging, right? Um, I would agree. That yeah. finding mm -hmm. new ways mm -hmm. to celebrate mm -hmm. 
live performance or storytelling mm -hmm. um, can unlock and welcome different audiences into mm -hmm. the room and invite them to experience with you mm -hmm. rather than perform for them. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, yeah, and I think that the new play development centers or playwright incubators like Playwrights Foundation have a role to play in that as well mm -hmm. in, in kind of opening the, opening the, um, that, the, those boundary lines. You know, the, it, it's not really quite what I meant to say, but mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, changing the definition, you know, what is a play or, or mm -hmm. being open to a play being something other than what a, a single playwright writing in a room by themselves mm -hmm. and then providing you with a script. So um, we do have one writer who considers himself a multimedia playwright. And, and so and his, so his plays are also gallery installations. They have uh, a audio visual aspects to them that are part of the expression and dramaturgy of the work. And you know, it's, it's um, challenging because it requires more money <laughs> or more resources. However, uh, I do think that places like CPT have a, a role to play in mm -hmm. defining, helping to define the next iteration of American theater. Mm -hmm. What it, and defining that, what is theater and what can be the theater of the yeah. future. Yeah. And I th I'm really excited about what you just said and, and what that is. Great answers. <laughs> So I did, um, and we will open it up to audience uh, questions and comments and, and a discussion in, in a minute. But I also wanted to ask, um, what what you guys do is hard. Um, you guys, I know, um, I know Beth works very long hours, um, and I'm sure Amy, you work very long hours. You, uh, you you're all, always reading scripts. You're developing new work. You're meeting with people, um, and um, as Raymond pointed out at our last uh, Dramatist Guild event um, in, in Central Ohio, you know, for every person that you do produce, you're not producing all these other people, and, and people can be angry. Uh, you can experience a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of attention on what you're doing. It's a public performance, right? Um, so what? Um, so what brings you joy in what you do? Where where do you find your joy? <laughs> What keeps you saying, I, you know, this is what I do, this is my life, right? Why do you, why do you, you know, why do you bring your, what brings you back every day to, to what you both do? <laughs> oh, there's so much joy. <laughs> there, and I mean that. I mean that whole, like, sure, there, there's also pain. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that's art. That's making art, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you're only finding joy in making your art, that maybe you're not digging deep enough. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so there's always pain involved, no mm -hmm. matter what. But there are so many things that bring me joy about what I have mm -hmm. the privilege and honor of getting to do. Um, I think uh, watching, uh, experiencing a play that sparks a conversation mm -hmm. for the community mm -hmm. in a new way is so incredibly rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, seeing, getting to watch an artist grow mm -hmm. in their craft and, and on this trajectory is, again, an incredible honor and, and brings so much joy and heart mm -hmm. to day to day. And then, you know, having the opportunity to see communities being reflected mm -hmm. in the work that we're creating. So whether that's uh, the Arabic speaking community through our Masra Al Alabi uh, ensemble or a Teatro Publico to Cleveland ensemble and seeing them creating their own work, you know, and creating their own play. Like the joy, you, you feel others joy mm -hmm. and that feeds you. And yeah, I, I work a lot, but so does <laughs> Everyone at CPT, like, we're hard workers. Um, but it's 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 being in service mm -hmm. to that, mm -hmm. to to the organization and to the community is is 
a flippin' privilege. Like, how lucky am I? And if I don't find joy in that, then I need to find a new occupation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really don't have much to add, honestly. <laughs> it, it, it's, it really has been the privilege of my, and honor of my life to, to work with the playwrights that I've gotten to, to work with and, and support mm -hmm. and offer resources to. And I do, I do garner tremendous joy from, see, from witnessing their successes. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I don't know, there's like this, I do feel pride in that, you know, yeah. the good kind. <laughs> um, you yeah. know, I do feel a sense of, of pride and, and, and yeah. that the impact, you know, that it, the work clearly that Beth does here at CBD, and I know for myself at Playwrights Foundation, the kind of work that we're really interested in supporting, the kind of playwrights that we're interested in supporting, I feel those voices and stories are really important mm -hmm. to tell mm -hmm. and, and to support. And no matter where they go and what they're doing, and um, I, I kind of still remember a couple of my early experiences with that, for example, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Liz Duffy Adams. Uh, I love, I <laughs> love Liz, Liz Duffy Adams so yeah. much. Dog Act, which I know you guys developed there, yeah. uh, is just a fabulous, it's such a, uh, I often teach it in my class because I well, love the language. Well, that makes me feel so good. <laughs> 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 the language in that play that is, is just so phenomenal. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and it is Liz's uh, great, you know, incredible skill and talent with each of the works that she has, you know, developed. Um, and so that play, Dog Act, was kind of the beginning of my, of my, my a realization of what, what we could do as an organization for an individual writer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I remember thinking after that play was produced in San Francisco and then, um, went on to win a bunch of awards mm -hmm. and got published mm -hmm. and, and that, um, and it's not the only one, I'm just using that as an example because it was a very early success yeah. of ours, that, um, uh, what was I going to say? I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> You're just overwhelmed with <laughs> yeah, joy. I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, really, I think I told somebody, I know this is sound a little on the morbid <laughs> side, but go with me here. Um, I told somebody that, you know, if, you know, if I happen to drop dead tomorrow, <laughs> I will have felt that I had contributed mm. to this world. Mm. And, yeah. you know, that's how meaningful it is, that, how much joy it, it brings me personally. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up uh, Liz Duffy Adams because I, I just admire her work so much. Um, uh, other, what, what, where, where are you guys? <laughs> yeah, Libby, uh-huh. Um, so, throughout the last panel, and into this panel, we've talked a lot about um, the importance of showcasing work of diversity of thought and voice and aesthetic. How do we make ourselves not only showcase um, inclusive stories, but allow the people of those stories are speaking to to have the opportunity I, I completely agree with you. Uh, and I think here at Cleveland Public Theater, I think we uh, have put a lot of time and effort and heart into that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether that is through a, a long building of relationships in those communities, whether that is the Latino community or the Arabic speaking community and uh, inviting them in over long periods of time. And that's incredibly important. Um, but it's also about ensuring that, that stories are being told on your stage that come from the perspectives 
of audiences you're looking to ref you you want to invite in, right? It is. Uh, I think Nicole said this in the last uh, panel. You know, the the original purpose of regional theater was community driven to tell the stories of your community, mm -hmm. to tell the stories your community needs to hear. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing that in an authentic way, the community will hopefully respond. Um, and, and you're absolutely right about a financial barrier. You know, I think there are many models across the country. Uh, you know, I think immediately of mixed blood mm -hmm. in Minneapolis that has mm -hmm. radical hospitality, uh, which is uh, free tickets. Mm -hmm. There are only so many paid tickets for every performance. Um, you know, here at Cleveland Public Theater, we always maintain a pay what you can mm -hmm. policy. Is that the right? Choose what you pay uh, for all rush tickets. I like, I like that distinction. I do too. I do too. Um, and so that that invitation is important to consider all mm -hmm. factors of what would invite someone in to your organization or potentially keep, not allow someone to come into your, mm -hmm. that barrier. Absolutely. I do think it's an issue for the American theater in general, though, because um, not only are, is it pri can price be a barrier, but also just the sense of who belongs in that space mm -hmm. and, the, and, and people feeling like, I don't belong there. I don't know how to dress. I don't know how to act. I don't know what I'm in for. I, you know, I'm not going to understand it, or I'm going to be, people are going to look at me, or, you know, all those kinds of barriers so I think what you said about you know in, inviting I, I happen I would just like add to something you said which I think I think you do do practice which is that it's more than just inviting people to come see a play mm -hmm. that it I think that you guys mm -hmm. practice inviting people to c into the process of making the play in in various ways so that there's a kind of feeling embedded within various communities you know. For sure, inviting people in to tell their story. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's, yeah, so pro the engaging and in, in inventing processes whereby um, people who may not ordinarily want to or have any relationship with theater become becoming aware that it's a place that that individual can enter and feel comfortable, mm -hmm. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're not very audience ori or oriented, mm -hmm. honestly. We do some outward facing, as we call it, we do some outward facing uh, <laughs> programming <laughs> in which we do invite you know people to uh, pay what they can or <laughs> choose their own ticket up price. But, um, uh, but what one thing we've implemented because our, the people that come to our outward facing <laughs> projects um, really love interacting with the playwright. Mm -hmm. um, and the playwrights, as all of you probably know, are not that keen on talking about their playwright after it's been <laughs> um, read because it's a very vulnerable piece. So we've stopped talking about plays and we've started engaging all kinds of different kinds of people who have some expertise or knowledge about the content. And we start, have started engaging with content, we call them content experts. Um, they don't, aren't necessarily scholars or academics or anything, um, just people who have something to offer. Mm -hmm. And um, engaging the people who come, the audiences in content based conversations instead of the play. And that actually, that process has kind of forced us to really reach out into our community in a way that we hadn't done before. And so more people know about theater because of it. 
So, I, uh, so are you saying like in a, in a say a reading, mm -hmm. uh, you would have then somebody maybe from uh, the community that the play is talking mm -hmm. about or an occupational kind of thing yeah. or profession would then kind of talk about talk about their experience in that? Is that? Uh, no, we, 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 we'll formulate each conversation very okay. specifically. Like for example, last summer we worked on um, uh, a play um, called um, uh, Colonialism is Terrible but Fa is Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was by a writer named Dustin Chin. And the play was about colonialism in Vietnam and food and the 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 way the the food was involved in that colonial aspect so it was French Indochina there were all these <coughs> French dishes that then you know anyway we found this woman we, we had two people one person who had actually written a cookbook based on the colonization of Vietnam and the way that had transformed over the last 40 years. Wow. She actually had written a cookbook. So she, she was talking about the food and the cookbook and, and, okay. and, and where the influences came and how that related to the um, socioeconomic divide, and et cetera. Wow. Was, that's an example. Yeah, that's fabulous. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's a great question. It, it's, it's a very different kind of process, right? Because I can't just necessarily read a script, a, a, a 60 page documentation of what or people. 120. Or 120. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> nothing's wrong with long plays. Um, but uh, uh, no, uh, it, it's, it's a different conversation, eh? Um, I think there are, there are some key things, and I'm going to challenge myself to get this right, uh, what I'm going to say. You uh, got this, Beth. You got this. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay, because I can receive feedback. <laughs> um, but um, there are a few things. Number one, who, who, how, who, how, and who, who are you working with? How are you creating? And what is your experience in that? Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you have to have this proven, extraordinary track record, but you need to share how you have experience doing that. And so that's one thing. What is your creative process? We uh, find that the more someone can truly articulate their creative process, the more window we have into understanding what they may or may not need. Um, and then um, work samples are always really helpful if you have them, right? If you're a younger artist, you may not have work samples, but we all have this amazing thing now, which is so different than 11 years ago from when I first came on staff. We all have video cameras in our back pocket. So it's a, it's a heck of a lot easier mm -hmm. to make a casual work sample than it was 10 years ago, right? Um, so yeah, so those are some of the key things, I think. I think one of the biggest uh, challenges sometimes is when someone is really curious to create their own piece in a devising method or in some other uh, not traditional playwright in a room method. Uh, they, they really seek help in defining who those artists that they should be working with are. And that's hard. That's hard for, for me as a, 
as a, a new play development supporter or a producer to really help you with because you got to find your people. You got to find your tribe, you know, the people who you want right. to mm -hmm. develop that relationship mm -hmm. with. And so, I mean, that's a huge thing is, is like you as that lead artist need to be driving that creative team because you, you know who you need in the room. Right. Is that okay, Molly? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's okay. That, that's a good question. Um, uh, so, so for this one particular player, I, I, I think I'm going to hone in on this because I know it the best, mm -hmm. you know, um, is to work on describing the, uh, the, the project and its elements. So f work on describing the project and its elements, and then having having a work sample mm -hmm. is is a, a, a different. It, it can be a different project. Mm -hmm. It can be a past project. So, for example, when we were when he he was writing this proposal, um, th there was no work sample, and he said, "Well, you know, we did this reading. I can send you know." I said, but the reading doesn't have anything about what you're proposing. Don't you have something from the last project you did? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I do. You know, and mm -hmm. and that um, that was very a very powerful example. So, for example, here's 30 seconds or 60 seconds of a project that I worked on that has some of the elements. That it's different content, but just some of the elements that I'm proposing for this project. Here's a sample of my audio. You know, here's a visual sample. Um, it, here's, here's a sample of, here's a video of some choreography, my, my aesthetic, mm -hmm. to get, give you a, an example of what kind of sort of work that I, I create, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so that's one thing that I would recommend. Um, but I think describing something mm -hmm. Using Im imagistic language, I think is 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 important. So rather than you know sort of like here's the synopsis of my play, that's important, but it doesn't really give. It just tells me what the play, the the arc of the play is, right? Here's the story or the the way this play is going to be, and that's important. But I want to have a feeling for it if it's not written. I would want to have a feeling for the imagery that's in it. So for example, this particular project that I've been talking about, one of the really important aspects of this is that it's, it's a play about in the, in, uh, someone who reaches enlightenment, but the story is told backwards. So, it, so, the t so it's this very difficult dramaturgical effort because we're we're going down, you know, it, we're going down to unenlightenment, <laughs> you know, in a way, and and you don't know, and so describing that, how that might work, is very important, right? And that was actually left out of the description, initially, and you know, and so I think I would encourage the artist to say. This is, and it's the problem I'm trying to solve, you know, that you get to solve with me, producer, you know? Mm -hmm. You get to help me solve this very difficult dramaturgical problem. That's enticing, I think. Yeah. Right. Right. I have a question, especially for me being a little bad mind. We talk all the time. We <laughs> <laughs> but they might like to hear her <laughs> answer. The frustration I have for, for all parties um, in, in, in the process. And, and you guys were talking about relationships earlier, and it's just like, this is, this is a horrible metaphor, but it's a metaphor that's like new to me. It's like if you have two people and they're out on a date, and one of them really, all they want is sex, right? That's all they want, right? And, and the other person's like, well, wait a second. And, and it happens like so what? often that playwrights come in and they're just like, all I want 
stage and the awesome uh, marketing from Caitlin. <laughs> Give it to me. And it's like, and at the same time, we're like, but well, that's not the most important thing we have to give. <laughs> and then it's like, how do we get into a place? And, and then the playwrights are like, A, feeling rejected. Because they're like, what's wrong with my play? What's wrong with my sex? Mm -hmm. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> You're entitled to your feelings, man. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think the question is very is is very deep in a lot of ways, and and really calls to uh, a lot of the research that's been done about about the plight of American playwrights that kind of feeds into the, that dysfunctional dynamic that you're describing. So you know, playwrights kind of traditionally, and I think that's beginning to change and has changed quite a bit. Um, because of the dialogue, um, have traditionally felt that that they're on the lower end of the the, the stick, and that, that they're working really hard on their on their art, and that they that oh, and they have to produce it too, maybe you know, and so I think that the 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 na the sector dialogue in in how playwrights are integrated into the process of both developing and producing a work will help with that. That's my take on it. And that, and a lot of playwrights I've noticed um, that we've worked with, you know, in the past, who are now coming into the theater in a very in major ways, are do tend to feel more agency. And that has engendered more, more of a collaborative spirit. And I think that it kind of depends on where the playwright, or, and how, the, and maybe Eric, you can talk about this a little bit too, that how a playwright, um, where the work is. So say for example, um, you've had like three or four, you know, premieres across the country of a particular play, and you were involved pretty involved in, in, the, in, in creating that work and pretty involved in the production. But you've moved on to write your next five plays <laughs> and several of them are now premiering, you know, and CPT calls you and said, we really want to work with you on, the, on this play, so, you know, but you've already had several productions of it and you can't be involved. So I think you know, it depends, I think, on where, you know, where you are in the process of a particular project and what else you actually have on your plate as a playwright. Oftentimes, playwrights are juggling five or six commissions. They're juggling um, a, maybe a teaching gig and, and several other premieres at the same time. And so, I think that um, coming to an understanding of where each of the entities are in the pro you know, and what what's needed, and then scheduling that in such a way that is workable. I think that's something I would say. Um, I do think what you're talking about possibly Raymond, and maybe I can address this a little bit too, is perhaps a, a writer who isn't as experienced, hasn't had an opportunity for a production, and perhaps doesn't 
hasn't had the enough experience to understand all the elements that go into producing a play and what kind of partnership can occur. And so, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, patience maybe and in in saying and, and also in saying that, you know, um, as a producer saying we here at this X theater are looking to collaborate with the playwriting artists that we're working with. And this is what our collaborations look like. You know, we're not here just to serve you. We are here to create relationship. And if that, if, how can we do that with you? Because we really like this project. And if, if that conversation starts to go awry, then like you said earlier, maybe it's not the right collaboration. And that's quite disappointing, I'm sure. Um, does that help? Yeah. And Beth, did you, uh, you know, I know you talk to Raymond all the time, but we don't maybe talk to you all the time. <laughs> so what, what well, are you thinking about? I mean, I think uh, the, the movie that, that mm -hmm. just played in my head, mm -hmm. as, <laughs> as Amy uh, was sharing, that's one of my directorial whatevers, um, uh, uh, but um, was this uh, idea of trust, mm -hmm. of, of trust. I would certainly hope that playwrights or creators would trust the producing organization mm -hmm. that is producing, especially a premiere mm -hmm. of their play, that there is a trust built, yeah. and that that's a two-way street, and that, you know, with trust, uh, you must assume good intentions yeah. on both sides. And so that's important. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's also everyone has the right to break up. I was wondering when we were going to get that I know. to the breakup. Uh, well, <laughs> and honestly, like, uh, just uh, continuing, I was like, well, you know, sometimes, sometimes you put out just to, like, see where the relationship could go. <laughs> um, but, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I think there's, I mean, to, to, to use a completely different metaphor. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Thank you. <laughs> we catapult ourselves out of that one. Um, uh, it's, it's, you know, there's, I, I like to use the term investment. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. let, let's, you know, we can get transactional. Um, uh, that, you know, that, that I think that producers and theater and play, playwright development labs, um, we're, we're looking at an investment in, in the work, right? And I think that uh, within the context of an investment, you know, you're looking at what you're going to reap from that investment, right? right? So, so those, those when, when it, from that vantage point, I think that, um, you do have to engage in, in a really intensive trust relationship that, that this, for, from my perspective, this playwright <coughs> is gonna be able to deliver. This playwright's gonna be able to deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're able to rock and roll with the process. Yeah. And, and th I trust that yeah. because I've established a relationship with <coughs> this person and I've read their work and I've done my homework. <coughs> and uh, conversely, the playwright needs to be able to trust that the theater is going to be able to deliver, that they're not going to fall apart a week before opening, that they're not going to, um, you know, lose their, you know, uh, lead actor the day before opening, you know, that they're going to be able to deliver on, um, on the promise of your play mm -hmm. and dig in and find the things in the play that are hidden, it, it's hidden <coughs> gem, you mm -hmm. know? And, and so I think that, I think one of the missing ingredients there is that I think playwrights do wonder 
what other than gaining some visibility and also getting to see their play performed, you know, and have people come to it and have, making art, you know, what their investment in your theater is going to, to do for them, mm -hmm. ultimately. And so I think that's really what we're talking about when you're talking about building a relationship and trust yes. uh, and, and being able to articulate what, what that ongoing thing is gonna mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I helped build that theater. Yeah. My work brought in, um, you know, the largest audience they, they've had, you know, this year. Yeah. Um, I, I was able to um, reach, uh, you know, and, and speak to my community in this really important way. And five young people decided that they wanted to try to write a play. You know, these are the things that, as a playwright, I might be able to do my investment, you know. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tim. <laughs> Yeah, I think, Thank you, Tim. Yeah. thanks Tim, uh, I think locally, and I'm sure there, there will probably be some help from members of the audience, uh, perhaps help me. Um, but I wanna say uh, that there, the CAC offers, mm -hmm. uh, Cuyahoga Arts and Culture, mm -hmm. offers uh, individual artists, like professional development mm -hmm. kind of training. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't personally know the ins and outs, so if anyone in the audience, like, There's Faye. There's a reception, though. Mm -hmm. That is really awesome. So, so, like, if, they, if there's something there, check, you know what I mean? Go to their website, they'll, they'll, Meg or Megan will get back to you. Um, so I know historically mm -hmm. they've certainly, like, had different mm -hmm. uh, convenings mm -hmm. and sessions and workshops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for just that purpose. Yes. There's also a website called Grant Watch where you can sign up for sort of a newsletter that will send you private Oh, And there are grant writers in the community who you can hire. Yes. To, you know. <laughs> a lot of a lot of, a lot of grant writers won't get paid unless you get the grant. <laughs> I mean, some, some of them work on the commission of, if we're gonna get it, then I get a percentage of it. Mm -hmm. Nicole, did you wanna say something to that? Okay. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> Says her collaborator. <laughs> you know, I think um, it's different for every project. It really is. Like, uh, you know, I think of uh, like when I'm collaborating on the Lush Sisters. My ideal collaboration is pizza and beer with A my lot best. Of beer. Other <laughs> you know me too. Well. But no, like my ideal collaboration in that environment is like pizza and beer and my best friends sitting around a table and us trying to make each other laugh, right? But also being really frank 
<laughs> and like getting in fights sometimes. Um, not mean fights, you know, just like <laughs> verbal disagreements. Um, other times, I think, uh, I think it, it's just having that uh, open dialogue of like, this is kind of how I'm seeing, the, these are the movies that are playing in my head. But I'm, I'll be frank and honest, like, I often hold back some of my comments because I don't want to over inform. I don't want to try to fix a playwright the problems and the problems I think may be in a play. I don't want to try to fix. I want to try to give a playwright enough information of kind of how I'm feeling or responding for that to maybe inspire them, maybe to a fault. Mm -hmm. Mm. No fault in that. <laughs> you know, I just, I, I get really, I don't, I'm, I'm a very specific individual. Mm -hmm. So I get really like nitty gritty. And I think that's one, that's a weakness personally of mine. Uh, and so I, I battle against that when I'm working mm -hmm. specifically with, with creators. Unless it's the Loosh sisters, and then I can, <laughs> I can say whatever I want to say to them. Uh, uh, so, uh, but yeah, I think it's it's always, but it's always different, mm -hmm. and it's it's. Uh, I think it's often driven by the lead creator, mm -hmm. what that collaboration should be. Mm -hmm. um, well. We have a program called the Producing Partnership Initiative, and that is um, something where, whereby a project that we're interested, we feel is really can find a home, particularly in the Bay Area, um, with a producer, that they, we would then partner with that producer to provide um, kind of the care and feeding of the playwright. It's like what I like, how I like to, frame it, but essentially um, making sure that the playwright can be in the room for rehearsals or some portion of rehearsals by, you know, providing travel and housing, by um, providing dramaturgy, by providing um, space and time and funds to do more development on the project before rehearsals start, um, all kinds of things like that. Um, so one of, one of the ways that I think for us, at Players Foundation works best in that collaboration is being very much a part of the whole production process. Just, and, and essentially being a fly on the wall. Like being, going to production meetings, going to design meetings, and having an artistic part to play, whether it's as an artistic director or a dramaturg. So that Players Foundation isn't just sort of in the background going like this, but that we're very involved in, in how the production is flowing forward. And um, that's one of my ideal collaborative journeys. Something I didn't think of when I was speaking earlier was as a, as a director, like, right, what is that collaboration like? All of the collaboration. Like, once those rehearsals start, me personally, this is not me organization, this is me as an artist, I want all of the feedback. I want, I want all of the conversation. I want it all. Because <laughs> it's just going to help me learn your intention more. And hopefully our intentions will merge and become one. I think we are out of time, but I want to thank Beth and Amy so much. For your time. <laughs>